Hey everybody, this is Oliver, and um, again I would like to show you a little bit about coding for H5P. And uh, well, again, just some basics because um, it would take ages to explain everything in detail, and uh, some things you'll have to, yeah, um, experience yourself. So um, yeah, just use it to get started, maybe. So that's what I why I hope to do with this video. So without further ado. Um, today we're going to talk about um, the so-called library.json file, which is used to describe um, an H5P library, and every H5P library has it. So it's good to, to know about it, at least. So, um, we can have a look at one. In uh, this case, um, I'll use multiple choice. Uh, I've used it before, because um, yeah, everybody knows that content type, and um, well, it's not everything in there, but it, it's useful to have a look at it. So uh, here it is, library.json. And um, if you don't know what JSON is, JSON is just a data format, um, which is a standard open um, format to describe things in a kind of compact way. And uh, it's used to to um, just yeah wrap a list of parameters that you need for an HIV library. So if we open that one, um, it's not that much, as you can see. It looks like much, but it, it really isn't. So um it's basically it's just a list of um properties and some values that are assigned to these properties that we can go through so first of all um every content type every library has to has it it has to have it um it is title um and the title in this case is multiple choice it's um not used to identify it but it for mm, not at least not internally for example it's used in the h five p um uh, uh, um, content type hub. So whenever you see a content type there, that is the title that you will see there. So then we have content type, which is just optional. It has, I think, it isn't in active use anywhere. It could be used to identify the type of content type. In this case, its question could be game potentially, could be um, multimedia. I don't know, um, but you don't have to have it. it it's really optional. So the next three are mandatory. You have to have these. It's um, the version of the library that we are dealing with. So as you can see, it's always split into three parts. Um, it has a major version, it has a minor version, and it has a patch version. So um, usually um, when you first release a content type, or let's say if you develop a content type, you would have a major version of zero because it's kind of in development, it's in beta, it's like kind of pre-stage. And then you would have the minor version to identify, well, kind of a kind of stable thing that you have could be um, 0.1 with that, for example, which has all the features that you want, but it's still in development. And the patch version is used to, um, uh, yeah, identify just patches, so you don't add new features and um, uh, but just fix bugs, for example. Then you would would update the patch version. So. Um, as soon as you think you should release a content type, it will usually be one, uh, the major version one, minor version zero, patch version zero, and then you may find a bug, and so we you would bump the patch version to to one, so we would have version one point zero point one, and uh, maybe one point zero point two because you fix another bug, and then you add a new feature, and um, if it's relevant for H5P to know that it's a different version in that case, because Sometimes you change things, then you um, you need to update the minor version, then you do that, and it's just kept here. So uh, that's the minor version. And um, the next one's also mandatory, it's called runnable. So um, this one could be zero or one, and just tells HREP, is it a content type, and it's one, or is it just a library that's like kind of a helper library that other content types can use, but it shouldn't be in the HREP content type hub. So that would be zero. But if it's one, it's a content type that, uh, yeah, it is runnable <laughs> in that case. Um, and the next one, I don't think it is mandatory, but uh, embed types. Basically, there are two. It could be, um, could be a div, and could be an iframe, or it could be both. So, so um, with this option, you actually define how the content type is embedded into the page. So if you if you know what what coding is, or what HTML is. Um, a div is just well an identifier for some object, and it's still in the page. And an iframe is kind of a secluded area where something where content is inside, and the outer part 
of a page cannot access the inner part of the iframe and, and vice versa. And um, for good and for bad, so sometimes you want to change the style sheet, for example, of HFP, but you can by just changing the style sheet of the outer part because it doesn't have access to the inner part if you use an iframe. So um, if you want to do that, diff is a good choice. Um, but on the other hand, if you have a diff and you change some of the um, um, of the styling of the other part and you accidentally change the styling of HFP content, that's a bad thing. So um, I think most of them use iframe nowadays. So, um, well, I use, use it myself. So feel free to use diff if you want to, but that's what you can enter here. Um, and this one is, I think, the final, no, no, there's some else that you need but machine name is also mandatory definitely it's the internal name that is identified uh, that's used to identify the library so uh, multiple choice is just the readable title and uh, h5e.multi multi choice is the internal name of the h5e library that's uh, used to identify it anyway for example to um, to access it from the browser directly you could do that Okay, then we have some optional stuff. We have an author, which is Jubal in that case, because we created it, but you don't have to have that one. We have the license, um, also optional. In this case, it's MIT, which is nice. Um, the next one's also optional. It's, set, it's called Core API, um, and also major version and minor version. That uh, doesn't have to be there, but maybe you um, need a particular function of the HFP core in that has some version. So in this case, this means um, I need something that is in version 1.19 of the H5P core and beyond. So if you want to run this version of multiple choice, you will have to have at least version 1.19 of the H5P core. Um, it's not relevant for users most of the time, but if you are a developer and you see, okay, um, what would be a good example? If you need the metadata, uh, field, for example, I think I have them introduced in one point, I don't know, 16, 15, um, then th this would be 1.15 at least. But I could be completely wrong. Any, uh, forget 1.15, um, just just an example. So you would, um, if you you know there's a particular version in the HRP core that you need for your content type, then you have to find it here. Um, yeah, then the other things are just um, now inform H5P um, what it needs, what the content type needs. So, for example, preloaded JS means um, I myself, I the content type um, need to run this file in, in uh, so JS dot multi choice dot j, uh, slash multi choice dot JS um, that is needed to execute the content type. That's all. So this is just one file. Could be ten files. Could be twenty doesn't matter so you can um, everything that should be loaded should be in here and if you wonder what that path is of course it is uh, the path here so js multi-choice just one file in here could be more for other kind of types uh, back to library.json um, then the same thing thing goes for css the style sheets and again this one has just one file but it again could be multiple files so so that is used to uh, well the style sheets then preloaded dependencies, um, kind of similar to preload JS, but in this case it's not um, files that are in this package, but other content types or libraries that should be used. So, for example, font awesome is um, uh, we, we see again machine name. That's the internal name to identify. So, H5P multi uh, this content type now informs H5P. Um, in order to run, I need definitely need this font awesome library, which is well. Uh, <laughs> it's just a font and um, in version 4.5 so um, if you don't have that you can run the content and uh, same goes for embedded JS it's a library Ubel UI is this particular library that adds um, visual elements like the buttons which makes it easy to use them, them so you don't have to create the buttons all over again there's a library for those you can just use Ubel UI to use it. sliders as well all kinds of stuff in there and H5P question, which is kind of a mini framework for question content type that you can use. So you don't have to um, worry about everything from scratch. If you have a question type content type, like uh, questions, answers, scores, um, the uh, score bar, for example, it's all in there. So um, 
that's what you define in these uh, preloaded dependencies and um, then you can have extra dependencies for the editor um, in this case we have this show when widget um, which is in a widget to opt to conditionally show and hide um, some options in the in the editor and we have this range list um, uh, widget which is used to display this um, list of feedback uh, items that you can have for a question so that is in here so that's editor dependencies and um, that's kind of everything that is relevant there are some more and um, if you want to have a look at all of them I think they're all documented then you can go to the website of H5P and go to documentation and go to the developer guide and there go to the H5P specification and of course then we'll have a look at library definition library.json and we can have a look at what we haven't seen so I've mentioned those so those are the all the mandatory ones title machine name the version numbers and uh, the runnable and then we have lots of optional properties we've seen most of them I think core API we've seen author we've seen list we've seen description we haven't seen it's a short description um, I think it is also used in the H5P core hub displayed below the title um, it just helps others to um, know what this library does we have seen preload but dependencies we have not seen dynamic dependencies but it's um, kind of similar I've never used this than, my, than myself and I don't think I've ever seen the content type use them but um, um, maybe at runtime you want to load some libra some uh, libraries then you would put the dependencies in there and that is useful because um, if you install um, content types HRP would need to know okay um, this I have to have this and uh, it doesn't matter if it's preload preloaded or dynamic so um, uh, it can be can be useful to have it but I've never used it myself we have seen preload JS we have preloaded CSS uh, embed types we've seen that was diff or iframe oh, we haven't seen this one full screen and metadata settings so um, we can have a look maybe full screen can be either 0 and 1 and if it's 0 then um, it doesn't have a full screen if, <laughs> if it's 1 it has a full screen and in particular it has um, you can can add it a full screen button yourself but this gives the content type um, like a basic full screen button and you will still have to implement um, the function to create the full screen but you have a yeah like a basic rudimentary full screen button in there and then we have metadata settings um, uh, yeah which can be used you, if you know the editor of h5p there can be a title field and there can be a metadata button for the title field and here you can completely disable it so um, the content type will not have a title field and uh, not have a metadata button can which can be useful if you have sub content maybe and it doesn't need a title on its own then you can could disable it here and maybe you want to have the metadata button because you want think metadata like uh, copyright information are important then you can have that but disable the extra title field so in this case disable zero uh, would be it's not disabled so and but uh, disabled extra title field one would um, make the editor not show the uh, title field and of course if you set this able to one then uh, none of uh, neither the metadata button nor the extra title field was shown and uh, yeah I guess that's it it's not it's not too much um, it's just good to know um, that these things exist and um, yeah because it, sometimes if you don't remember the library versions and you don't um, if you were other the other way around if you if you want to know okay I want to include some content types somewhere and I need the particular library version then you will find them in this library JSON file and um, as I said you have to experiment yourself um, yeah just do that and uh, I hope to see you in one of my next videos bye